So I'm going to quickly go through this. Um, this is, if you think about how this all comes together, I'll give you an example here around external users. So again, in this new environment, this new paradigm, external users, meaning contractors, um, uh, maybe customers, partners, they are being added into your environment in different ways. They may be added on an email distribution list. They may be added in a shared folder in your in your uh, you know Dropbox. They may be added as a, uh, a guest on Slack. They may be at who knows. They they could be added in a whole host of places. And those external users, of course, there's good reason for that. Actually, again, back to where the value of the SaaS applications are, the fact that you can share a file and collaborate on a file with a customer is kind of amazing. Um, but need, you need to know where those users are. Again, I'm going to say I have a high, there's a high likelihood that in your environments, maybe not 90%, but there's a high likelihood that you have external users in your environment somewhere that you are not aware of. Most likely, it's going to be email distribution lists or files, um, but it's there's a whole host of places where they could be living. And so um, the first step is centralizing all this data. Who are the external users on the Slack accounts? Who is the external user on the Google account? Who's the external user on the Office 365 account, on the Dropbox account, so on and so forth. And then once you do that, understanding not only who they are, but what access do they have? I mean, if they're on a, on a, a file that is specific to them, maybe it's a project plan that has been shared with a, a customer and it's specific to that customer, maybe there's no problem. Uh, but if it's a contractor who's helping the executive team and they're on a Slack channel with all the execs um, and they were left there because there's no good way to audit that, then um, that could be a big problem for you. And the next step is insights, is really, um, you know, another example, by the way, on all this is calendars. You know, someone could be on a calendar, a whole host of places that they could be. Anyway, the next step is insights, which is you want to actually be told when this is happening. Maybe this user has been in this channel for 90 days or, or whatever it may be, this external user, this contractor. Um, but then there's the action. You don't want to just look at that. You want to be able to go and quickly remediate that. Oh, my God, this person is in here for a year too long. They stopped working with us a while ago. Now they're actually a consultant for one of our competitors. How do I go kill that access? And then ultimately, if you can build a policy around this and you can get automation done, that's the, like I said, that's the pinnacle. Now that may take a while because you don't want to kill some contractor's access who, who, um, who needs that access. But there's some interesting ways you could do that. You could time base it to say when a contractor is added to our environment, they get 90 days by default. And after 90 days, uh, the manager or the person who they who, who requested it gets alerted and, um, you know, and, and then they get another 10 days and then it deletes that account. It, there's a whole host of ways you could deal with it. But automation is is key in this. Uh, you you want to get there because if you can get there again, you can sleep easier. I mean, I, I believe that like you, you don't have to think, Oh God, where, where, where is that user? And where, uh, I know we added someone six months ago to these email distribution lists. Where, where do they live there? Which files are they on? And then ultimately you're going to want to delegate that because essentially you're, you're going to want, you know, um, at scale, especially if you're at scale, you're going to want to delegate that work. It's going to be in someone's, uh, workload. Some, someone's, uh, work that they have to do is to monitor and to, to, uh, you know, remediate this or to remove people's access. And so you want to be able to delegate that, but you may only want to be able to delegate user, uh, based activity versus you, you don't want to give that help desk person access to files also, um, or to, to, um, licenses or what, whatever it may be. Um, so like I mentioned before, if you have any interest, um, just to bring this back to better cloud, we, we can help implement this in your organization. Now we're not going to do everything. We're not going to, it's not going to be a magic bullet where you, you install better cloud and the next day, just everything is taken care of. It's going to require work. You need to build these policies out internally. Um, we can help you put them into better cloud, but, but you need to have those internally. We can help you decide what those should look like. Um, but if you've never seen the product, I strongly suggest you take a look. It's, um, we launched this new platform at the end of 2016 and it's just been, um, amazing what what is what this platform can do honestly we we uh, spent almost two years 20 million dollars building this platform and launched at the end of 2016 and and 2017 was a big big year for us in terms of functionality I'm very proud of what we've put in the product and and we designed the product 
off this framework. We, 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 we literally, our product is designed based on the framework that we heard people were using. We tried to match that. We didn't just go out and say, we're going to be, you know, try to fit into some magic quadrant from Gartner, or from this analyst. We, we actually, we talked to customers. We said, what are you doing? Um, what's the right way to manage these environments? What have you had success with? And we're going to try to match that in our product. So anyway, if you're interested, you can fill out the form there. You can also email me directly if you're interested, dave at bettercloud.com.